AQA, A-level physics, astrophysics, Hubble's law. Now, a lot of this is GCSE, but we need to make sure that we know what we need to know, okay? If it's not here, they won't ask it, but make sure you know this. Edwin Hubble, uh, an American astronomer, and basically, before Edwin Hubble, uh, astronomers thought that the Milky Way was the only galaxy. The Milky Way was the universe. And within the Milky Way, one could see clouds and some of them were like spirally clouds and things. But it was believed that they were within the Milky Way. Now, what Hubble did was he used standard candles now, remember, I mentioned this in another video. It's an object that we know its absolute magnitude. Uh, the one that we talked about was the type 1A supernova. Make sure you can explain what that is. But when that supernova happens, flash, we know its absolute magnitude. Uh, and if we know its absolute magnitude, we can work out how far away it is, okay, using the equation. There are other types of standard candle, things like Cepheid variables and blue supergiants, but uh, standard candles are objects of known absolute magnitude. And they're very, very useful because Hubble used them to measure how far away Andromeda was. And the answer that he got was that it was much, much further away than people thought. And he realized that it's not part of the Milky Way, it's another galaxy. And he did it with lots of other spiral galaxies as well. And he plotted a graph. Okay, look at the graph in a bit, sorry. Uh, now, a big mystery at the time was why, apart from the ones in our local group, nearby galaxies, nearly all galaxies seem to be moving away from us. Now, the velocity that they are moving away from us is called the radial velocity or the recession velocity. We'll call it the recession velocity. And we can calculate the recession velocity using redshift, using spectral lines. Delta lambda over lambda is V over C. And what Hubble did was he studied the relationship between the distance, how far away they were, and how fast they were moving away from us and he found a pattern. He found that galaxies further away are moving away from us faster. And this is Hubble's graph. And so it's a graph of our recession velocity against distance. So the recession velocity, you get it from redshift of, uh, from standard candles. Uh, no, redshift, uh, and then distance, you get that from standard candles. And what you see is that the recession velocity is proportional to how far away these galaxy are, galaxies are. And the, the constant, as in V equals HD, usually it's H naught. So V is H naught D, the constant is called Hubble's constant. So the equation, the constant in the equation is the Hubble's constant, V equals HD, okay? One interesting little thing, by the way, is as the galaxies get further away from us, it, like if you came back in a few billion years, uh, the, the gradient would be significantly different. So the Hubble's constant is actually getting smaller all the time. It's not constant. But we assume that it's constant. We assume that it is a constant. But the, this pattern tells us something very important about the universe. How come distant galaxies, the further away they are, the faster they're moving away from us, is because the universe is expanding. The universe is expanding and all galaxies are moving away from each other. You know, yeah, they're moving away from us. They're actually moving away from each other as well. It's not like we're in the middle or anything. Okay, we could be any of those galaxies there. So as the universe is expanding, all of these galaxies are moving away from us. 
okay like a plum pudding in the oven getting bigger and all the all the little raisins are moving away from us and this means that back in time the universe was a lot smaller than it is now and if we went far enough back in time then perhaps the universe was very 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 small um, there was a point back in time when the universe for whatever reason decided to expand very very rapidly uh, I'm, I'm not saying that there was nothing there and then all of a sudden there was a universe what I'm saying is that the universe used to be much 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 smaller tiny 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 and then at some point in time it expanded very very rapidly now from Hubble's graph and from the Hubble constant we can actually work out when this happened uh, and if you just have a little read of that and follow it then the age of the universe is equal to one over the Hubble constant and if you get a value for the Hubble constant and do one over it this tells us that the universe is about 13.8 billion years old at least 13.8 billion years old this rapid expansion began okay so from Hubble's graph from one over the Hubble constant we can get the age of the universe when the Big Bang happened now we'll talk a bit more about the expanding universe that there's actually some more evidence for the Big Bang there's two more bits of evidence now the the very very young universe was imagine it just shortly after the Big Bang it was very very hot uh, it was a lot denser than it is now obviously it was a lot smaller it was also more uniform because there weren't any stars or galaxies yet uh, there was less structure to it it was much more uniform just like a very 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 hot cloud of subatomic particles now as time has gone by uh, the universe has cooled down it has spread out it's got bigger it's got a lot less dense okay so the universe now is much much bigger and it is cooler it's more spread out and now we have these structures called uh, galaxies uh, and in between the galaxies uh, there are large spaces very very large spaces between them so the universe has been clumping together it has been coagulating now when the universe was very very young uh, we're talking about 3,000 300,000 years old remember it's 13.8 billion years old when the universe was a baby we got the very first atoms it cooled down enough so that electrons could actually go around protons uh, before then it was too hot it was just a plasma everything was you know there were no electrons in orbit now before we had the first atoms there was lots and lots of ultraviolet in the space between the atoms loads and loads of ultraviolet filled the space between atoms now the universe has expanded uh, and that radiation um, is still there only it's not ultraviolet anymore because the universe has expanded it has been redshifted and now it's actually microwaves so we've gone from ultraviolet to microwaves this background radiation in between the atoms and it can be detected uh, as a very faint glow in any direction and we call it CMBR cosmic microwave background radiation okay uh, it was predicted uh, and then it was discovered by accident by two guys Penzias and Wilson uh, and this is further evidence for the Big Bang model the fact that you know before atoms formed there was this ultraviolet radiation filling space and and it is still there only now it's it's microwaves in the background and then one last piece of evidence for the Big Bang model uh, the universe has been cooling down for 13 billion years 
Uh, the very, very young universe was so hot there were no atoms. There were protons and there were neutrons. Now, we can predict from there what's going to happen. Okay, as it cools down, we can predict that the neutrons will decay, most of the neutrons will decay into protons. And then when it cools down enough, uh, we can start getting smaller atoms forming, not in stars, but just in, in space, in free space. So smaller atoms can form uh, isotopes of hydrogen uh, and also helium. And now the universe is about 74% hydrogen and about 25% helium by mass, by mass, that is the abundance, the relative abundance of hydrogen and helium. And we can come up with models which predict this, and the models basically match the Big Bang model, the cooling of the universe, okay? The fact that the relative abundance of helium has increased over time as the universe has cooled down. Okay, this agrees with mathematical models based on the rate of cooling since the Big Bang.